party folks welcome back to 50 knock mile arc we're in madagascar today and we have to hurry up and get out of here because madagascar wants to shut down everything let me in the comments if you know what that's a reference to but anyway on a serious note we are on the fly jsim 727 100 version 2 i stress version 2 because as i record this version 3 is being worked on for x-plane 11 i've been watching val and jack in their live streams working on the airplane so that i can learn the ins and outs as it goes along, so when I get the aircraft, once it's released, I don't have to sit and spend hours and hours learning it before I can give a presentation video to you guys and gals and folks and kids and adults and everyone who flights sims and watches my videos. I appreciate the support, by the way. I'm just going along con with control, nice and slow again, like I have been in some previous videos. No special camera work, all built-in cameras. Um, not much to talk about, because this isn't Model Airport. The um, airport we're flying to isn't modeled either, but that's okay. I've always wanted to fly from Madagascar to mainland Africa. I don't know why. I just always have and never have. I guess because it's a longer flight than it looks. It is 316 nautical miles. It does take over an hour real life time between setting up the aircraft and getting going and landing. And it's a very long, slow landing process because we have to do an arc to land, which we'll talk about in a moment, or else we run into mountains. I did do a practice flight. It went okay, but, um... I'm going to have a totally different approach this time. So I'm actually going to do an approach I did not practice. Something else I wanted to mention about version 2 that kind of is a hang-up with this aircraft is, and I got this from Jack himself, this aircraft as it sits in X-Plane 11 has double the thrust and half the drag. So planning your approach and your descent is very difficult, which is fine. doesn't really matter because version 3 will be out soon and I am able to handle this aircraft. So we're not going to let that be a big factor. But I wanted to throw that out there. So if I do have to nosedive with um, spoilers like we have in the past, that is why. It's just because of the physics of the aircraft. Of course, that's going to be worked out in version 3 of the aircraft. But um, I just wanted to let you know that is the case. Because I have had comments telling me spoilers are for noobs and blah, blah, blah. And, well, if you plan your approach correctly... In a normal behaving aircraft, yes, spoilers are kind of for noobs. However, in this aircraft, the way it's modeled right now, it's not my fault. It's not my inexperience. That's just how it's behaving. But I still love this aircraft. That's why I'm still going to fly it. In fact, we'll probably do a couple flights in version 2 before version 3 is released. Um, you may be asking, why, don't I, why didn't I get the 732? Because I love the 727 more. I don't miss not having a cabin because the 732 has a cabin. So I'm just going to keep on with the 727 version 2, patiently waiting for version 3. And um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it like usual. Otherwise, let me give you some details of what we're doing today. Again, a four-minute introduction. I apologize for the long introductions lately, but um, it's been a while since I've flown, so I enjoy chatting it up. So where are we? We are in Madagascar. They are going to shut down everything, so we got to get out of here. We are at Foxtrot Mike November, Quebec, which is... Bessalampi, the Solampi Airport in Madagascar. We're going to hop over the water, which is simply called the Mozambique Channel. We're going to hop over to Mozambique, Africa. We're going to go to Nampula, Fox Rock, Quebec, November Papa, in Nampula, Mozambique, mainland Africa. Um, I have had a subscriber request more African flights, and I will be doing them. This happened to be on my whiteboard long before I got that request. But it kind of bumped it up a few notches. So, like I said in the past, if you do have a, a request for a flight, and you don't have to be a subscriber, if you have a request for a flight, let me know and I'll bump it up near the top of my list. As long as flight time is under an hour and a half, and that's because of real life constraints. Although we do have a mega haul planned, which I'm not going to tell you about because it might not work out. But I have one planned. We'll see. We'll see if I can get the timing down. I just wanted to throw that teaser out there. So, anyway. I told you where we are, told you where we're going, told you why we're out here in a hurry, told you the distance, told you what we're flying. Let's just get right to it. So here we go. First thing we need to do is get our passengers and cargo. Where's my mouse? I have a new wireless mouse that stops moving, you know, turns off automatically to say battery. And the time on this is like 30 seconds. It's very, very short, and I have to keep clicking to get it going. But anyway, here we are. Um, it's our B card. All right. A lot of first-class passengers who can afford to get out of here in a hurry. Not so many um, rigged or cabin. 
phone version three, by the way, this entire thing is changing. I've gotten a preview of it. I'm very, very, very excited for the version three. Um, but that's all I'm going to say because I'm just going to say it's different and I like it a lot. All right, distance 316, so our fuel only really needs to be, well, let's make it 500 in case I screw up and have to do another arc. We'll make it 501. Well, that's all we're going to do there. Much simpler weight and balance than that twin otter that I keep tipping over. All right, let's hide that. Anything on here? No, we're not going to do that yet. Um, man, it's been a while. Let's shut the back gates now so I don't forget. Everybody's loaded up anyway. All right, here we go. Where is this? Battery up there. All right. Trip the APU and start the APU. It is so nice, by the way. Go all the way up, please. All the way up. Come on. I want to go up one more. There we go. It is so nice to have 20 presets now. It's like playing 11 11 because then I can just preset over here. I do a video on that, by the way. If you want to know how to get presets 11 through 20, just search my channel. I've got a very detailed yet brief video on how to get all 20 of your presets. I'm still finding out many months later that most people don't know you have 20 preset views now with the built in camera system. So go ahead and check that out. And we'll let that go, and the temperature is going to stabilize on its own. We're not going to wait for it. We're not going to edit anything out. Field and generator to close now. And that should turn off external power automatically, and it did. That's right up here. Let's get some lighting going. We're going to do our um, logo and our wing and our beacon. We'll do those for right now. All right, interior lighting, no smoking. And the fasten seatbelt, which normally would have been on when they were boarding, but we boarded strangely because we're already on the... I was going to say tarmac. There's no such thing as a tarmac. Look it up. Tarmac is a brand that made the asphalt for airports way back in the day. And um, people call them tarmac like tissues Kleenex. I did not plan on that tangent. Anyway, let's arm the emergency lights. Test the stall horn. And bring that back to normal. If we hear that, it's too late. So um, this thing will deep stall and it can't recover. Um, APU bleed is over here. I do have a very, very detailed cold and dark start regarding this aircraft. And I will do another one as soon as version 3 is released. And I learn it well enough that I know what I'm talking about. And so I will not do a cold and start of version 3 until I have this mastered. But I'll master it quickly. All right, cruise. We're going to cruise at 29,000 feet because it's a short flight. And our landing altitude is 14.4. A lot of fours in there. Let's just get this to 14.40. There we go. What am I going to do here? Switch to ground. It already is. Flight plan stuff. Very simple flight plan. We Oh, I couldn't find an official approach plate for this. I found a whole bunch of other ones for Africa, so I don't know what's going on with this. But I did find a VOR, and the VOR is right at the end of the runway. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the VOR, which is 113.9-er. Like so. We're going to put it in both, actually. I'll tell you why in a minute here. But um, we're going to fly towards the VOR. When I did my practice flight, I flew over it, circled around. It took forever, and I had to dodge these mountains, so I had to come in high. I had to nosedive. We're not going to do that this time. This time, we're going to approach the VOR and then do a 15 nautical mile arc. I chose 15 nautical mile arc because that is the name of my channel. And I found nothing published, and I know we're not going to run into mountains, and that should give me enough time to descend and see the runway. So the only published thing I found was this VOR with an arrow saying 252 degrees. So we are going to... Approach, whoa, approach this VOR and go at 252. It's still there for my practice flight, okay? So we're just going to approach the VOR and then circle 15 DME arc. Approach the runway at 252. Now, the runway itself, I think, is 230-some degrees. So it's going to be an offset approach, but it's will take over visually anyway. So that's our plan. It's just approach this VOR, circle, or no, arc, I should say. Approach, approach, arc, I'm talking with my mouse, and follow this inbound, and then, boom, dog leg onto the runway. Now, of course, this VOR doesn't reach all the way to Madagascar, so we are just going to simply leave at 301 degrees, 
because that is an inbound radial to this VOR. And then what will happen is, actually, you know what? Let's change this. I'm skipping a step. See, that's the problem with practicing. I get a little confident and I skip stuff. We are going to use a heading bug at 301 degrees immediately after takeoff. Approach the VOR at 301. Do a 15 DME arc. That's why I have VOR tuned, turned in to tuned in to use this. And then we'll use these gauges as well so we kind of know where the heck we are. And then once we circle around, we'll switch this to 252 and come in and we'll land. Hopefully, I had a hard time landing yesterday because of the lack of drag, but we'll just deal with it. Um, that's it. It's that doggone simple. All right, so uh, let's see. Now, crossing the water, you normally don't just hit heading bug and go for it, but the wind, winds are very light. Real world weather, by the way, with light winds. I think it's like four knots and then only 25 knots up at cruising. So very light winds. In real life, the heading bug wouldn't work because you'd be pointing towards a heading bug and then the wind would blow you off course. But given the light winds, and it is a short flight without radios, I'm just going to use the heading bug. We'll pick up the VOR. We'll have to S-curve to get to the VOR inbound. And you will see all that. I'm going to keep all that in the video. Um, but that is the plan. I cannot believe I spoke so much about that. I was just, I'm just excited to fly this for you all. It's been, it's been much, much, much too long. We are going to be cleared immediately for cruising altitude at 29,000 feet because we're going to be over the water. We're just going to get right up there and be done with it. Pull up the map. Let's get our barometer reading. Let's see. What is it? 2979. We'll come over here, two nine seven seven nine. Why did our alt light come on? That's weird. Okay, whatever. Two nine seven nine. I don't think I've ever had a two nine seven nine. I'm just making sure that's really a nine because. Okay, there we go. All right. Why does that go to eighty? See that eighty one seventy seventy nine. Very interesting. Okay, what is next? Okay, normally we close the stairs, and we already did. If this had doors, I'm not sure if version 3 is going to have doors. A long time ago, I read that it would. But I think somebody was mistaken that with the 732. So we may have side doors in the next version, and air stairs. I really don't know. Otherwise, if not, we'll just keep the back stairs. All right, let's head over here. I'm really... I'm not really behaving to myself today, am I? I apologize to my dedicated viewers... And I apologize to the new viewers. I'm just, my migraine pill is kicking in and I'm just so full of energy. Those migraine pills are like five cans of Coke at once. All right, here we go. Turn on the eight fuel pumps. Head up here and close the cooling doors. This takes a while, so thank goodness I can edit this so that we can jump way ahead in time. And just like that, they're both closed. Turn off the AC packs. All bleed valves are open now since we're low altitude. Um, ground crew button. We don't need to push back. We're on the runway in the next version of the aircraft, I believe. This built-in pushback, which I really like, is actually going to disappear. And it's just going to use the built-in pushback that x 11 offers. Begin pushback. Um, don't, no, we're not going to begin pushback. We don't have anything to push back. So that means we're going to start the engines now. We'll do 2, 3, 1 like usual. Flip that switch. Wait for N2 to get to 25 like so then we come down here and introduce fuel and we can spend all day waiting for it to stabilize and the pressure light to go out and everything but I'm not worried about it because I know this aircraft isn't that specific so we're just gonna go right on to the next engine here and then introduce our fuel and I believe in the next version of the aircraft I'm gonna have to relearn some of these systems because I think it's gonna be even more detailed and more specific and more um, dependent on accuracy and timing, I think. So you can't just go through stair engines and wait. I think you really have to do what you're doing or your pressures will be off. I know when you do this at high altitude, you have to be much more careful or else your pressures won't work and your engines won't start. And we have gone through that. There's a video on high altitude too. But this is just, you know, we're only a couple hundred feet above sea level. There's 25, introduce the fuel and wait for everything to stabilize and then we can move on with our hydraulics. And you heard the click, so good enough for me for our video here. Let's turn on hydraulics B and A. There we go. And then we're going to close the bus ties. 
like that. Galley power can come on. How come I can never remember where galley power is? There it is. Galley power. Both is AC packs, so people are a little bit more comfortable. Cargo heat can go to normal. The central power is the generator. Right there. AC meters. Bus tie. They should already be, and they are. Make sure there are no lights on the panel, and there are no lights on the panel, which means we did something right. Fuel heat off, and it is by default in this version for some reason. Let's come up here and do our Pytot heat. We're not going to worry about anti-ice. Time to trip and turn off the APU. Now wind down freaks me out every time. Come over here, switch our pressure, cabin pressure to flight. Do our temperature control. Let's warm it up just a little bit. It's a chilly morning. And um, gas per fan can come off now. APU bleed can come off now. Check our reference and speed bugs. 30, 20 flaps. 20 flaps, which is one below three clocks, like four o'clock on the dial. And uh, 108, we are light. Okay, not going to complain about that. Um, I have a preset for my weather. What is it? In radar. Here it is. Turn that on. When that boots up, we'll do TCAS. In the meantime, we'll do taxi lights, but we're already on the runway, so we're going to turn on everything, including the landing lights. There is no taxi, but we got to get that to RTO. Don't need to worry about any overhead lighting, because it is bright daylight out right now. Flaps. Let's start getting flaps down. That's going to take a while. Let's see if our um, radar is ready to push TCAS, and it is. There we go. Check flaps. Oh gosh, what's my flap? What's my flap on this one? Yeah, there we go. A couple more here for flaps, and then check the trim. If you click on the green band, trim will automatically set for you. I found that out by accident while watching the Jack stream, Flying Jackal. So that was nice. All right, we're good to go. Um, let's have a look outside. Just because we can, and we're not going to tax these, so we're just going to look outside right now. Okay, everything is all lit up like a Christmas tree. And there's the ocean, and there's Mozambique right across the water. Actually, it's more like right there. And I think we're good to go. So here we go. We are going to what? Nothing. We're going to note the time on the clock. What does that say? 7, 18, and 20 seconds or so. And um, we're going to hold brakes. This is a short runway. However, in this version of the aircraft, the short runway doesn't matter because we get double the thrust, like I said. So <laughs> you don't need a long runway. We're going to go to 97% for takeoff, not 100. Oh, there's only 90, so let's keep going. Ooh, let's go here. A little more th there. There's 97 right at the yellow band. This seems like a very narrow runway. I have a feeling this would be a very difficult runway to take off on if this were a normal model aircraft. There we go. Positive rate. I think. Gear up. Flaps are coming in. Stay ahead of that schedule. And engage autopilot. There you go. Let's come down a little bit on the flight director. Just a little. There we go. Excellent. All right, let's get down here. Let's engage altitude and let's engage heading right now. So we immediately turn to the right. There you go. Flaps still coming in. We're right on schedule. A little bit ahead of schedule, actually, but that's okay. We're going to keep turning. Are we really at 301? Was that right? Yeah, 30. Yeah, because there's 3005. Let's do a little bit more. Couple more, there we go. It's 32, 30, 10, 5, yeah, alright, there we go. So we will just um, follow this heading until we pick up the VOR and then we'll circle around. Super easy. Climbing like a champ. Let's come down here. Whoop, jeez. Come down here and bring this down to 92 so we don't start on fire. Now you know if you're going to start on fire because if you come over here, and look at these temperatures. If they're in the red, that's where you start fire. So we're actually pretty close. I'm glad I brought that down. I did. Well, is that is it? Let me see here. So time o'clock we did. Gear up it is. Flight director is fine because we're not going to stall. Gear off. Auto brakes. Oh, the auto brake can come off now. There we go. Gears up. And then we go over here to the cutout, which is off. 
um, auto. There it is automatically. And um, that's it. Until you get to 18,000 feet, then we reset the barometer. And that, folks, is how you start the 727, at least version 2. Like I said, it's going to be a lot more detailed in version 3. I'm going to have to be a lot more careful. I'm just going to screenshot of that coming out of the clouds. Leaving out of Madagascar just in time for them to shut down everything as I said in the beginning of the video. We're going to do some sightseeing, and this is, you know, this is a longer flight. You know, it's about 48 minute flight time, I think. So, I've got a bit of time. I am actually going to um, reset my brain. I have a lot of energy right now, and too much energy for video. So, we're going to fly. A little bit of sightseeing. No music, though, because I'm going to... You know, I don't do sightseeing music with the 727 videos because I got to jump in and do things, right? We're flying slant alpha. We got to mine this VOR when it kicks in. I got to mine the... I know all the stuff I got to do. So I'll be in and out of the video with sightseeing in between. So, in fact, we're almost at 10,000 feet already. So right there, I can turn off landing lights. Let's get those off. The next step then would be barometer at 18,000. And then resetting ourselves for the VOR once we pick it up. And then planning descent, like I said, it has half the drag, so um, descending is hard in this thing right now. But that's okay, we'll figure it out. And then we will do our arc, and we'll land. We'll do the best we can. Um, without the drag, it's super easy to just float along the runway. But anyway, there you have it. We'll do some sightseeing. I'll be jumping in in a couple minutes here to reset our barometer. But otherwise, enjoy, well, water, I guess. Jumping back in here because I realized I forgot to set IAS for the climb because I was rambling on so much. I want to climb at 280, but if I just suddenly engage IAS, would dip down and get speed. So I'm slowly bringing this up so we still climb while we speed up, if that makes sense. That's what happens when you ramble. And in the meantime, we're about to hit 18,000, so I'll set this to 29 or 9 or 2. There we go. Although it's 18,000 in the U.S., I don't know what standard is in this part of the world, but that's okay. So I'm slowly going to bring us up to 280 knots, and then we'll resume our climb, and then we'll be over the water. We won't be able to see land on either side, it's too hazy. And we've got a calculator descent. So a little bit more sightseeing, I'll see you when it's time to pick up this VOR. All right, so we've reached the top of our climb just about. So the only thing to do now is just keep an eye on our speed because we're low enough that we will overspeed quite easily. 
So once this gets to about 320 or so, we'll start bringing back throttles little by little to keep us below overspeed. Still haven't seen the um, VOR pop in yet. I think it'll pop in when we're about 170 miles or something away. So we'll have lots of time to plan our move. But as you can see, our speed is climbing up over 300 without any problem at all. So I'm going to start drawing back throttles just little by little. So you can see over here, whoops, let's try that one. I'm just moving them back, barely. Just enough so that I don't overspeed. So I'll keep an eye on that, and I'll let you know as soon as this VOR kicks in. Alright, just checking in with you again. We have not picked up the VOR yet, but I wanted to um, show you that despite Madagascar being pretty close to mainland Africa, you can't see land either direction. So that's our destination out there. And we came from back there. That is quite a contrail, isn't it? We came from back there. Of course, to the north and south, you can't see anything anyway. But, um,. This is just the channel. Was the Mozambique channel, I think, I jotted down? Yes, the Mozambique channel. So just a small body of water if you look at the globe, but a big body of water even if you're in a 727 flying across it. So just wanted to point that out just because I'm sitting here in my studio listening to the sim sounds in my headphones, and I wanted to share that with y'all. So there you go, quick update, and... um. I'm just going to sit here and watch this wing flex while we wait for the VOR to kick in. Should be any minute. I, when I did my practice flight, I swore it kicked in sooner. But um, we'll just sit here and, and enjoy the sim. That's what it's all about. And there we go, we picked up the VOR, and we're just to the right of it. And so we're going to um, move our heading bug over just a little bit, and then we can engage the localizer now. I guess it is lit up in yellow, so let's do that. I'm just going to have lock, like so. And when this gets down to about 157 miles, I will start to descend. Again, I don't have a calculation or anything for my descent or top of descent, so when I panic, I descend about 150 miles out. Because I read somewhere a long time ago that most aircraft generically descend 150 miles, so I've just been using that whenever I panic. So we're just going to pick that up. I'll let the airplane fly us to it, and then that'll bring us directly in line with the VOR. We'll start our descent at 157 miles. And we'll get ready for our arc. So let me pull up 
the map so you can see what we're going to do. So there we go. So this means we're a little bit north, so we're going to come down until we see that radial, then we'll end up parallel to this line, just a little bit further south. So that's all it is. Once our destination comes up on the map, I'll get a barometer. But um, top of the set will happen soon, which means I'll see you in a minute or two. Alright, so let's get ready for top of descent. And I made a note to myself to um, go down to 6k, but I think we're going to go down to 5k. That just feels better. Oh, so 5k there. All we need to do then is we're going to set this to... Uh, we're going to keep our speed up. Let's set this to 320. So we're going to pull back the throttle, come down here. We'll reset our altitude. Hold, or arm it, I guess, and go to IAS hold. And then the autopilot will descend us and keep us descending at a speed of 310 knots. And I'll use the throttle to adjust our rate of descent. So right now we're descending more than 2,000 feet per minute. I don't want to do that. I want to descend probably about 1,000 feet per minute or so. Maybe 1,500. I'd rather descend too much now than level off and step it down later. So let's bring the throttles back in so we descend about 1,500 or so. And then, like I said, I'll make adjustments. Actually, well, let's do 1,000. I'm remembering my practice flight. I think 1,500 was too much. Let's descend at 1,000 feet per minute. And then what I'll do is I'll calculate how many miles we're going in a minute. And then take that against our distance or altitude we have to descend between the two. And then I'll figure out our rate at that point. So now we're just going to sit here until we get to 18,000 feet. Then we'll look at the barometer for our destination and set that. And then at 10,000 feet, we have lights, and about that time, we should be coming over the mainland. I'm still adjusting throttles as they talk here. So about the time we get to 10,000 feet, we'll be coming over the mainland. And then I'm going to watch this DME-2 here and try to keep a 15 nautical mile DME arc best as I can. And um, use this pointer to give me some orientation of where we are. And then we'll come around. When we line up with the 252 radial, that is when I will um, follow the radial in, but we still have to land visually because that will be an offset landing. So I have it all planned out. It's going to work out, I promise. Everything is set. It almost seems too easy. I feel like I'm forgetting stuff, but I guess not really. I mean, I've just done this enough now that... It's not a big deal at all. So there we are. We're going to line up with the 301 inbound. That means the airport is directly in front of us. I can see land. If you look right here, you can see land. Right there. So I'm just going to sit manage the systems and manage our descent and make adjustments as I need to. And um, unless something comes up, I think I'll see you at 18,000 feet to get our barometer of our destination. All right, just jumping in again to let you know that I am going to increase our descent to 1,500 feet per minute because when I did my calculation, I had to come down 20,000 feet. And I was using the clock on the left, and we were going 10 miles in a minute at 1,000 feet per minute descent. So 10, I have to come down 20,000 feet at 1,000 feet per minute would be 20 minutes. However, if we're going 10 miles per minute, that would mean... In 20 minutes, it'd be 200 miles, and we'd overshoot. So, I'm going to increase our rate of descent to about 1500 or so. Now, our horizontal speed or lateral speed is always constant because of the IS hold. So, I am just controlling our vertical speed with the throttle. That's all I'm doing, sitting here with my throttle and doing math in my head. And of course, it's not precise math because. I'm rounding things, so I have to fine-tune things. But anyway, that's why I'm calculating my descent without a computer and based on this model with its 
weird nuances, but there you go. There's Mozambique right there in front of us. Um, our runway, our airport is literally in front of us because we're pointing towards the VOR, and the VOR is at the tip of the runway. Runway 23, I think. So there you go. Um, actually, we're getting pretty close to 18,000. I think I'll just stick with you right now so we can make our adjustments at 18,000 feet. And while that drops 2,000 or 3,000 feet, I'm going to um, do some more math here. All right, so we're at 18.6, so let's look at our map. Can we see our destination? Yes, we can. We click on it. 299 or 2. Okay, simple enough. So we'll just keep it there because that's where we're at now because we're above standard. So um, I recalculated, and we're doing better now. Um, we will be a little low, or still... Yeah, a little low, I think, at this rate. But I'd rather be too low and level off and then step down than be too high and have to slam into the ground. Although it is a 727, and like they say, if you can see the runway, you can land on it. And I've kind of demonstrated that inadvertently a few times. So let's have a little bit of a look around here. The next thing we have to do is at 10,000 feet, there's a bunch of stuff we have to do. So anyway, there's Mozambique. I'm not sure what that water inlet is called. We're just about to leave the channel. Madagascar is back there. We got out of there just in time. They have shut down everything by now. Cannot enter or exit Madagascar right now because of them, because of the pandemic of 2008. All right, we're going to get ready for 10 grand, even though I know we're at 11.1, but we're going to turn on all of our lights. And um, my calculations, even though I couldn't speak the math fast enough, are correct, because if you look at everything now, we would get to our 15 DME arc exactly at 5,000 feet at this speed. So my calculations were just correct. However, we're going to screw everything up, because we're going to slow down to 250, which is going to level us off to slow us down. In fact, it might even make us tip up a little bit to slow us down. So I'm bringing back throttles to keep us level. There we go. Then we'll slow down and I'll get the throttles back in again to control the set rate. The autopilot will control our speed at 250. And I sure hope we get down to 250 and 500 feet so we don't get penalized here. All right, we're coming up on our 15 nautical mile arc just about and at the rate I'm going, we should be at 5,000 feet at 15 nautical miles. So, considering my math isn't super, I seem to manage it pretty much every time. I don't know how I do it, but I seem to calculate fairly well. Now, those mountains in the far distance are 6,000 feet, so obviously we're well below them, but we'll be landing before those far mountains. Those closer ones, though, we do have to mind those. So look at that, we'll be at 5,000 right at 50 nautical miles. Let's get our heading select engaged. And then as soon as we get down to 5,000, IS will turn off and I will use our thrust or our throttles to control our um, descent. And the airport is at 1444. I don't have any step downs or anything. I just have a VOR that I'm just gonna aim for. So I'm hoping I can figure out my descent without having to dive or coming in too low. So let's keep about a 500 foot per minute descent for now until I figure out what we're doing. Let's just start coming down now because our alt IS to turn off and it did. I heard a click. All right, whoops, I wasn't watching my thing. I should have started turning at 16 miles because that would be less than 15. Let's start turning now. And let's keep our speed up, though. We do not need to slow down yet. I'll wait until our base before I start um, before I start bringing speed down. So 
just going to use thrust to control our descent. We should be trimmed about 250, though. Alright, 15 miles away like it wanted to be. Let's start churning little by little here. Um, I'm bad, like I said, I'm bad at flying an arc. I'm not even going to talk about it. There's your timing, and we don't have decimal distance. We just have the nearest mile. I'm just going to do it the way I can do it best and just hope we um, end up coming in at 252. In fact, looking at our VOR thing, I could just come in now, I guess, because look at we're getting closer. Let's just do that. Yeah, we'll just turn right in and then um, come down after we clear these mountains. That works for me. We're 13 miles out, though, so we should probably get gear down. So let's um, bring back throttles to get us down to 200. It's going to make us float a little bit. See, it's kind of strange like that. There we go. We're going to zigzag a little bit. We, sh we should come in right through these mountains. But considering we have terrain, and I couldn't find a published approach, I think this is going okay. Oh, dear. We're, <laughs> we're going to come in right over this mountain. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm hoping it turns us in just before. Yeah, it's moving. It is going to turn us in before. Okay. Good. There we go. Gear down. Gear down can, gear can come down much more than 200, I think. But all right, here we go. Everything is set up here. Brakes, lights, blah blah blah. Spoilers are armed. Yes, they are. Whoops. And um, first set of flaps down. And the runway should be over to the right. Just getting the binoculars out. I don't see it. There it is, right in front of us. Good. So that's going to be quite an offset, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. In fact, um, second set of flaps down. Right on the money. Keep the throttle up. I want to start coming down. What are we at? 4,000. So we got to come down 3,008 miles. I think it's time we kill autopilot. And fly this thing in on our own here. Alright, let's get our V card out. Go to landing. Flaps 30 at 116. So flaps 30. Oh, what is it? Two more. Okay, we're starting to stall because I'm not paying attention. I am out of practice, man. We're flying really dirty right now. Dirtier than we need to be this soon, I think. See the runway right off the nose. Okay, there we go. We're at the speed for full flaps, or for flaps 30. Gears down, lights, everything is set. It's just a matter of finding the runway. There it is. Let's start coming down a little bit more. What are we at, 37? Yeah, let's come down. I think we cleared those mountains. Oh, yes. So when you can see how the VOR got us close in a dog leg, but the VOR actually you can see it on the ground is right off the tip of that runway. So if we followed 252 all the way in, we wouldn't have any room for a final, at least on this aircraft. So this is working out fantastic. I just got to watch my speed now, and um, just in case you forgot, we have been flying by hand for the last couple minutes. Actually, more than the last couple minutes. All right, gears down, lights are on, brakes, spoilers are armed, and um, somebody's texting me. They always text me right when <laughs> I'm trying to do something important. Two and two on the Pappy, so we'll keep about 800 feet per minute, 500 feet per minute. All right, let's drop down to our approach speed. I'll do the best I can to land. Like I said, with the low drag and everything, it's easy to just float along the runway without actually touching down, but I'll do the best I can. We're a little low, it says. Um, again, throttle for descent rate, pitch for speed. So I'm going to keep my pitch the same, but I'm going to use more throttle to slow down our descent rate. And this throttle takes a long time to kick in as I grab a big boat. Alright, let's throttle back because I want to pitch up to slow us down. But I don't want to pitch this up too much. There we go. I'm going to go sterile. And I'll see you after we touch down. Providing we don't... Oh, there's a big hill here. Oh, I forgot about that. There's a big, like, 200-foot cliff here. 
Let's see if we can do this. Now I'm going to go sterile because this is getting scary. Touchdown, hold off on the nose wheel, reversers, let the auto brakes do their job. I land to left of center, darn. My practice flight, I landed dead center. Oh well, that's okay. We'll just let this roll a little bit here. There we go, tap the brakes or reset um, auto brakes. I don't know if that really works. I'm just gonna disarm them now. Nope, we're stopping still. A little bit of throttle to keep rolling it out. Flaps can come in. And um, that was a greaser, which in these weather conditions or runway conditions, a greaser is fine. I know simmers are obsessed with greasers, but in real life, a lot of times, greasers are not the way to go. It's actually quite dangerous, but we got dry, one, dry runway, hardly any winds, so greaser's fine. We'll take it. We'll go check the replay, too. All right, so there is a city in front of us, of course, but that city comes right up to the airport. Um, it's not modeled, so we'll just slow down here, and then we'll turn this corner and then check out that replay all right I backed it up so you can see this cliff that I totally forgot about which is why you should not be looking at the ground you should be looking at the pappy and see there's this cliff right here so I flare let's see how this goes Did I land short target there you go awesome I am quite happy with that. Weird, the spoilers don't work on replay. But you heard the spoilers come out. That's what that screaming sound was. Alrighty, let's check the cockpit. I wonder what, I'm wondering what my descent rate was when I touched down. Alright. We were right on speed. We're five too slow, but close enough. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Less than 10 feet per minute. Holy moly. Wow. 100 feet per minute, sorry. Look at that. Couldn't even tell. Alright, I'm happy with that. I decided to do a tower view before we go back to real time. Just because um, I wanted to. So let's have a look. I love all those lights. Man, that was, that was low. <laughs> Touchdown right at the target mark, though. Nice. Oof. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Man. Excellent. Okay. Okay, what do we need to do? Note the time on the clock. Exactly an hour. Exactly an hour flight time. So a little longer than it should have been, but my flight times are always longer than they're supposed to be. So let's see here. Landing lights can come off. We'll keep the runway turning lights off as well. Keep the taxi lights on. Auto brakes disarm. Flaps are in, I believe. They are. And auto brake... Auto brake came in on its own for some reason. That was really strange. Otherwise, just external power and turn off the fuel at the gate. So let's see, where should we go? Let's just go left, I guess, because it's unmodeled. And let's see if we can look at the um, city in the background while I taxi. We all know this doesn't go very well. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. So far, so good. Let's see. Oh boy. I don't know why. I can drive an RC car and RC plane just fine backwards, but for some reason taxiing backwards does not work very well. Cool. Alrighty, let's just swing around here and let's just park this thing somewhere. Let's just park it right here, I guess. Just a little to the right. There we go. And set the parking brake and simply just shut down the... F no, we're not going to shut down the fuel yet. We're going to do external power first. Um, connect. Actually, that's on battery. Right? That's on battery, so we can shut it down. We should be able to. Let's try this once. I'll come up here, shut down the fuel. Because you wouldn't hold, uh, you know, you wouldn't connect a GPU with the engines running. You'd, somebody would get hurt. So battery is still on. We're not going to use APU. Let's just turn on external power now. There we go. That worked. Okay. Excellent. That's all supposed to work. Alright, let's hop outside and lower the air stairs so people can get out of here. 
And let's turn off our remaining lights. We'll just keep the beacon and logos on. Uh, fasten seatbelts can come off too. But we'll keep the um, no smoking on. And let's hop outside. Ooh, very quiet out here. All right, folks, thank you for joining me. I'm just looking at the mountains in the background above those buildings in the center. That is so awesome. Welcome to Mozambique. We got out of Madagascar just in time. There are more mountains over there, it looks like. Fun little quick flight. Only one VOR to manage. We had to do a few things out of the ordinary, like use a heading bug, since we didn't have SIVA or Dead Reckoning or anything to get across the water. But it worked okay. I knew it would. Our approach worked out much, much better than I thought. They called us in for an early approach, so we didn't even have to do an arc all that much. We just turned in on the um, radial. So we got some arc practice and some inbound VOR practice. And then we landed nice and smooth. We had a greaser. So I'm happy. I am going to get this thing put away before my family gets home. And I'll catch you on the next one.